Hello, Senior Scholars. Tom Mandeville back uh, once again at the Champlain Memorial Library. The first thing we're going to talk about in the first lecture today is uh, the retreat from Quebec. Now, uh, where we left off uh, last class is December 31st, 1775. As you'll remember, that's when General Montgomery and General Arnold have a two-prong attack on what they just called Quebec back then, which we call Quebec City today. Uh, Montgomery comes from the west via Lake Champlain and the Richelieu River and St. Lawrence River, and Arnold treks his way through the wilderness of Maine and Quebec. The attack on Quebec takes place on December 31st, and as you'll remember, General Montgomery is killed in this attack. General Arnold is wounded in the leg, and Captain Morgan is captured by British forces led by Sir Guy Carleton. Excuse me. Now, in the next period that you'll see on uh, the three-page chronology handout, that I'll be attaching to the email that you should print out and have with you during class on Thursday. Uh, in the period of January through March, basically Arnold and his men, uh, many who are wounded or more are getting sick, they're running out of food, are camped outside of the Quebec City, supposedly laying siege to the city. Arnold is sending messages back to the Continental Congress requesting reinforcements and money to be able to buy supplies, and they are going to be sent uh, by the Continental Congress in that time period. But the men sent, many of them are sick when they arrive, and it's not going to help very much. And the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the next set of reinforcements will come uh, on April 2nd, 1776. General Wooster, who had been in command of Montreal, brings nearly 2,000 men with him to Quebec uh, and replaces Arnold, who's still recovering from his wound. So Arnold goes to Montreal and takes over Wooster's position in command of Montreal. Now, in the meantime, something that's going to happen uh, in this period of uh, really the the, uh, the uh, it commences in late March and is going to carry on through April and May. That's not on your handout. The Continental Congress decides that they need to send a delegation up to Quebec to investigate the debacle of the Battle of, Connect, of Quebec and see what they can suggest for future actions. So on March 26, they uh, create this commission. The commission was made up of Benjamin Franklin, Samuel Chase from Maryland, and Charles Carroll of Maryland. These three will uh, disembark from Albany Pier uh, in April, on April 2nd of 1776. They'll spend a few couple months up in the area investigating Canada, and uh, the three commissioners will return with a report that basically states that they should take more uh, military steps to uh, capture Canada and uh, they also reported on the very poor condition that they found the Continental Army in when they were there, when they arrived in the time period they spent there. And that was the poor condition of all the troops stretching from, as we mentioned before, Quebec City all the way back down to Saint Jean, Quebec, on the Richelieu. <clears throat> so. In the time period of April through May 76, uh, the American forces that are uh, still trying to siege, place a siege on Quebec, 
uh, due to sickness, mainly smallpox, because it's ripping through the Continental Army at this point. <clears throat> and because a lot of the men's terms of enlistment were expiring, back in this day and age, you'd sign up for a year, and if you decided not to re-enlist, you went home. They couldn't keep you there. So the force at Quebec had dwindled down to basically 500 men fit for duty. And this is going up against trying to lay siege to uh, a fortified town of more than 5,000 inhabitants, these French Canadians and British who were not helping out Arnold uh, or Wooster in this case at all, <clears throat> they had armed the city with 148 cannon and there were approximately 1,600 highly trained British soldiers inside the walls of the fortress city. <clears throat> On May 1st, 1776, General Do John Thomas arrives with a reinforcement force of about 1,900 men, out of which by the time they arrive there, about 1,000 of them are fit for duty. It just shows how harsh the conditions are and the spread of smallpox in the Continental Army. <clears throat> On May 8th, uh, by May 8th, General Thomas, now in command, he relieves uh, General Wooster of command, uh, uh, starts to uh, see the first reinforcements arrive from England to help the British in uh, fend off the siege of Quebec. Messages have been sent back to England. England put together a force <clears throat> that arrived on 15 ships between May 5th and May 8th, 1776. Now, seeing this large number of troops reinforcing the already 1,600 at Quebec City, General Thomas, who now himself has contracted smallpox, orders the beginning of a retreat from Quebec, starting with the invalids, uh, the wounded, and the artillery on the St. Lawrence, all loading up onto bateaus on the river. <coughs> Excuse me. By May 10th, the retreating Americans had arrived at Point de Chambault, which is near uh, the settlement of Three Rivers, or Troy River A, I'm, I can't pronounce French, so excuse me there, uh, which is sort of the halfway point, if you've ever traveled this stretch, between Montreal and Quebec City. Uh, from that point, after they stopped there in rest and reconnoiter, they decide to continue the retreat back to the village of Sorel, which is at near the mouth of the Richelieu River, where it, uh, the confluence with the St. Lawrence is. So, uh, during the rest of uh, May, General Thomas uh, starts to the retreat down the Richelieu River uh, towards Lake Champlain. By late May, General Thomas is so ill from smallpox that he enters the hospital at Fort Chamblay. Unfortunately, on June 2nd, 1776, General Thomas passes away from complications related to smallpox. So what's going to happen next, uh, the... Uh, Continental Congress, after receiving the report from Franklin, Chase, and Carroll, decide to go full-fledged and reinforce uh, the forces in Canada. Now, also, uh, just to give you a little more evidence on how uh, important the Continental Congress at this time uh, viewed Canada and the capture of Canada being... John Hancock, the president of the Continental, Second Continental Congress, 
wrote a letter to General Thomas on May 24th from Philadelphia. And here's a quote from this letter from Hancock to Thomas. Hancock writes that Canada, in their opinion, meaning the Continental Congress, is an object of last importance to the welfare of the country. Should our troops retire before the enemy and entirely evacuate that province, it is not in human wisdom to foretell the consequences. In this case, the whole frontier of New England and the New York governments will be exposed, not only to the savages of the Indians, but also the British forces, not less barbarous and savage. So, the Continental Congress, including John Hancock, saw the writing on the wall. If we can't hold Canada, then that's what's going to hold the British back from invading America from the north, which is so true. That's going to happen pretty quickly that year, and that's what sets up the Battle of Valcour, which we'll be talking about shortly. So they knew what this meant. But... Uh, <clears throat> so if you carry on to your handout to June 1st, 1776, General John Sullivan uh, will lead a force of more than 5,000 reinforcements uh, up to uh, the Richelieu River area in Montreal. Within this force that Sullivan leads is General William Thompson and uh, some colonels at the time who we'll be talking about later that become pretty famous uh, in the revolution and especially in the Champlain Valley. Colonels John Stark, Arthur Sinclair, and Anthony Wayne. Uh, Sullivan takes command and very quickly he decides after consulting with the soldiers there that uh, a counterattack on three rivers should take place. So this counterattack, which really you got to remember is sort of egged along by the Continental Congress, the report of the commissioners, President John Hancock, they all believe they got to hold Canada. And the only way to do that is push those forces, the British forces who are chasing the retreating Americans, <clears throat> back to Quebec City is step one. And to do that, those forces, remember there were 15 shiploads of reinforcements from England, have made their way and have a pretty big stronghold at Three Rivers, halfway between Montreal and Quebec City. <clears throat> so on June 8th, American forces attack Three Rivers. This poorly planned, which had some really lousy reconnaissance information, probably some of it supplied to them by Canadian loyalists, uh, is repelled at Three Rivers. <clears throat> Led by a British force under the command of another person we'll be talking about later, will be important from the British side of things in the Champlain Valley, that's Lieutenant Colonel at the time, later to become a general, Simon Fraser of the 24th Foot of Highlanders. He's a highly experienced uh, <clears throat> officer who fought bravely in the French and Indian War here in North America, and he's a very capable commander. We'll be talking about him at Saratoga. <clears throat> The Americans really get their hats handed to them in this battle. Uh, their total, their loss is total more than 400 killed. General Thompson and 235 American soldiers were captured. And in this battle, which is very lopsided, the British only lost eight men and had nine wounded. This horrendous defeat at Three Rivers will trigger an all-out retreat from Canada to Fort Ticonderoga. It'll be the consensus of the officers 
and General John Sullivan and Benedict Arnold, who had saw the writing on the wall before this ill-fated attack, that they needed to retreat totally out of Canada because the for British force was going to overwhelm them. So, from July 14th, or excuse me, June 14th, uh, until July of 1776, this all-out American retreat out of Canada will take place. In preparation after the horrendous defeat at Three Rivers, an open-air hospital was set up on Illinois. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Illinois. Many of you may have been there before. Illinois, or as it translates, Island of the Nuts, because there's a lot of butternut trees there, which are a useful food source, uh, is in the middle of the Richelieu River, and it's also a site that Parks Canada maintains. Uh, it's where they have uh, the, reconst or the restored fortress of Fort Lennox. I don't know if any of you have visited there before. That's also a very short day trip up the Richelieu, and it's a, a pretty neat site because not only, you know, was it involved in these earlier uh, conflicts, uh, it'll be fortified uh, for the War of 1812 and beyond. It, uh, at that site, you take a ferry across to Illinois, and uh, then you tour the fort. It's it's a very lovely place to go to. Another nice uh, site to visit this summer once the border opens up, which I'm pretty confident it will, but don't hold me to that. So they've set up an open-air hospital there to treat the wounded and ill on this retreat. On June 15th, uh, General Arnold abandons Montreal and burns part of the city to the ground, which later he'll face court-martial charges over uh, that he'll successfully fight, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, on June 17th, Chambly was burned by General Sullivan, and on Fort St. Jean, he tor or on June 18th, he torched Fort St. Jean. <clears throat> on June 20th, the rest of the sick that were at Illinois at this point were ordered to totally evacuate to Lake Champlain. By early July, the rest of all American forces in Canada, led by General Arnold, he'll be the last man out of Canada, <clears throat> will arrive at Crown Point. On the way from Illinois, in St. Jean to Crown Point, Arnold with the remaining forces will stop, as I mentioned before, at Point Affair, where a couple of his men will pass away from smallpox because uh, they'll stop there for supplies in the camp overnight and whatnot. And that's why we have our memorial there that I was explaining to you uh, before at uh, Point Affair. <clears throat> so this is the retreat from the attack on Quebec. And obviously, uh, this is a big blow to American forces. The Continental uh, Congress had uh, put a lot of time, effort, money, soldiers into capturing Canada, and it's a complete failure. So <clears throat> this is one of many debacles in the beginning of the war uh, which really stacked the odds against the Americans defeating the almighty British. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break now. That's uh, what I've got to explain to you about the retreat out of Canada in 76. And when I come back, we're going to talk about what leads up to and one of my favorite uh, topics, the Battle of Valcourt. So, I'll be back with you shortly. I got to take a little break, get a drink of water. I'm getting a little bit hoarse here. So, see you soon.